To have a, you know, a community level based organization that's literally with your neighbors and the people that you're living beside, and the people that you can lean on, that, that's incredibly important and, and, and very powerful. So if you can picture Edmonton in 1917, there's about 50,000 people in the city. Edmonton on one side of the river and uh, South Edmonton, Strathcona area, had just amalgamated five years earlier. So now Edmonton is twice the size. It's also at a time because of the excitement of being a city, we're going to have, um, we're going to do big city things. So people were a part of they became part of organizations. So you had the Edmonton Club, you had the Petroleum Club, and you had the Masons were really uh, a thing at the time. We had the International Order of the Daughters of the Empire for the women to get involved with. So it wasn't unusual for groups to form and become an official group. So we have Crestwood, this community, in this space that was defined, they had a common, um, and common need. They needed uh, they needed advocacy to city council for basically for utilities and for roads and transportation. It was hard to get downtown, it was hard to get through the community. We are in the suburbs, people weren't driving as much at the time because they were expensive, cars were expensive and they didn't have it. So there was a bunch of needs for just this area. Um, and so the people got together like they have done in other parts of the city. So the founder of Crestwood Community League is a, a gentleman by the name of George M. Hall. He started it on March 3rd, 1917. And the reason he started it is he said, I want brighter, kinder communities. And to do that, we have to build this like little team of people who will basically advocate for everything the community needs. So if we need running water, I mean back then, you know, power wasn't a thing. <laughs> if we need a bridge to get to our home, someone has to advocate for us to do that. And who better than to build a team of people who work for the community and, and work to get those things. Roads got paved, they got sidewalks, they, the streetcar went all the way to 142nd Street now instead of just 100 and, uh, 124th Street. Um, and they would have had electricity brought out to the area as well. So um, a number of other places w were also just developing their ears perked up and the community got together and formed their own little league, brought their interests to city council as well. And all of a sudden city council had six or seven communities now that were um, asking, tugging on their shirt sleeves and saying, but we need this, but we need that. So our district then, became the first area to have a community league. EFCL is the foundation that helps to um, provide us with those resources to, to, to complete those fights sometimes. Community leagues were instrumental in so many things, just providing services for communities and providing community sports for kids and adults. Now I'm the historian for the community league, so I'm able to sort of look back and look at the bits and pieces from day one. In fact, the skating rink was the very first thing that anybody in the community wanted to do together, so that's what they did. They're, we're building our house, and we're uh, going to build a rink because those things are obviously the most important thing to do. We do have some Edmonton Oilers who sometimes show up at our rink and surprise all the kids and skate with them. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Those kids who, who play hockey now professionally, they often grew up on these rinks, right? And they have such fond memories of them. And going there and surprising these kids is a big deal. It's really cute, actually. <laughs> there's different ways to make the NHL, but there's not too many ways if you don't have access to the game in great quantities. You know, if you can't actually play and skate and, and be creative and try things out, you know, in large quantities, it's hard to get really good. If you have an, a community league, you know, set up across the street and you can just kind of go play hockey whenever you want, and your only limitation is, you know, your parents calling you home for dinner, <laughs> like that's a pretty amazing setup. And it's a very rare setup, really, compared to anybody else. Like there's not a whole lot of communities that have that, um, you know, throughout North America. From my experience, it's incredibly unique. Like I think to automatically have a, a, a small group of people, especially your neighbors, that you're just automatically like a part of something together, um, it's different. Whereas here, you know, you have a system in place where, you know, whether it is the spray park or the, the ice rink or the bake sale or the Halloween party or the food trucks, those opportunities are just there you know, to, to go meet the people that you're surrounded by, to meet, to meet your neighbors, to become part of that community, you know, to have those opportunities that, uh, 
you know, that give you that chance for that outreach. Um, you know, that's what I've noticed is, is been, you know, very valuable to our family.